welcome to Pay It Forward. Got a really quick and easy tutorial for you all today. It's just a simple little one to show you how to make up these little felt tassels. Now they're made up in double felt and you can use your sewing machine. Um, you don't necessarily have to have a sewing machine to make these up, but you will need some hot glue and some craft glue and some sharp scissors and a little bit of heat and bond. So let me show you how they're done. So the way that I begin these uh, little tassels, now I'm making them up in this size. Now you can make them longer and you can make them fuller. Um, you can make them smaller and you can make them not quite as full, of course. I find that making them up with the two contrasting felts gives you a lovely little underside colour there that when it flips out, it's really pretty and even on the top, it's really lovely. So starting off with your piece to measure 14 centimetres by 6 centimetres and this is cut out of double felt. Now double felt is simply just two pieces of felt joined together with some heat and bond and you can see that that's completely bonded together. The reason why I do this is so that when we're cutting those little separate tassels it's much easier to cut them and you also get a really nice clean sharp finish. Um, if if you leave the pieces separate, you find that when you're cutting your little long tassels down, it ends up quite messy and quite tricky to do. So this is just a very straightforward way of doing it. So that the first thing we're going to do once we've cut out our piece, now this is the optional part. I like to take it to the machine and sew a little stitch of some kind. It doesn't matter whether it's just a straight stitch it can be a little zigzag like I have here. Um, you ladies might be really lucky and have a, a machine that has wonderful decorative stitches and you can use your contrasting threads and sew along the top there and that can be your embellishment. On the little one that I'm doing today, I'm actually going to finish with a little embellishment of a, a, a little piece of rickrack like that which we'll put around. So for that reason, I'm only going to sew just one little line of stitching across here. It's only about a quarter of an inch from the top. And really for me today, it will just be as a guide for where I'm going to pop that little braid on to finish. In this case, I let the stitching be the decorative part. So I'm just going to go to my machine and just make that one line of stitching just along here so I've got a little guideline. There you can see I've sewn just as it's a tiny little zigzag stitch just for me to use as a guide. So then we flip that one over and you can see there that using my just a marker, now none of this will be seen, this is the inside of your little tassel. Using my marker and my uh, ruler, I've just marked one and a half centimetres down and taken a straight line across there. That's the line to which we'll be snipping. So straight up to here. I've then gone ahead and just marked in some lines. These are just guidelines for while you're cutting, you'll find that it's much easier and you'll stay nice and straight all the way along if you've got these in and of course they won't be seen. So what you'll need next are some very, very sharp little scissors. So I have my little scissors and I'm going to just take tiny little cuts you can see there, they're probably only about a millimeter or, or even just a millimeter and a half wide. Just keep them even, whatever width you choose for your little tassel ends, just keep them even all the way along. You can see that while I don't have lines to follow all the way, those little lines that I've drawn in are helping me to keep that all nice and even. I'm going to make my way across and I'm going to cut all of that fringing right the way to the end. So here is my little strip and now all of my little fringing is cut all the way. Flip that one over and you can see the lovely little, when it kicks up, you can see the lovely little colour popping up from the underside. So there's two glues that I use when I make these little tassels. You can do the whole thing with either one of these glues. This combination I just find makes it manageable, easy to do. Um, I like to have a bit more control over when I'm rolling these up. Hot glue 
as you would know, dries very, very quickly and you have to work very quickly. I just use it for the parts um, that I can be assured to do quickly. So what I'm going to show you now is first of all, I have my trusty, very old hot glue gun here ready to go. Now we're going to insert the little string or your little ribbon or whatever you're going to put there that's going to extend out the top that your little tassel hangs from. Now that could be anything. It could be a little ribbon, it could be a piece of leather thonging. Perhaps you're making your little tassel up as a whole sort of a boho style necklace and you'll actually put it directly on onto that cord. Um, whatever you do I find the best way is to pop it right here. Remember as we roll this up this little cord will be coming out from the absolute centre of the tassel so it will sit very nicely. So I've got my little piece cut here and I have it extending quite a way down. This will be, these ends will be hidden amongst um, the rest of the little tassels. And this is where I use my hot glue. So just right on the end here, I'm just gonna add just a tiny amount, just enough to secure both little ends going to sit that one on there. So those ones extending. Pop that one into place. The other reason why I use hot glue only for the, the beginning and the end is because I just like to have more control over how much excess glue is there. Right, so that one's nicely set. And the next step is that we're going to make our first little turn and our first little turn needs to be very very tight you can have a little have a little go at it first if you like where we're just going to give it a really tight fold over that first one needs to be very very secure and tight in the middle so again I'm going to use my hot glue and it's just that little spot there just enough to hold it. I will secure my first little fold. I hope you can see that. That one there. And you can see I'm going to really watch that I keep my edges as I roll. I'm going to keep all of my edges right tight next to each other. Now just going to give it another little turn. And then from here I'm going to switch to my craft glue. Now this is just an ordinary craft glue. It's a craft and hobby glue but it's suitable for fabrics. It's fairly quick drying but certainly nothing like the hot glue. What that means is that as I'm rolling it up, if I go a little wonky, I can pull that open and, and reposition, which is which I want that sort of control. So just going to be adding and I'm just going to do it section by section. So you can see it's just a little bit of glue there and I'm going to roll up. Now how you roll it up is entirely up to you. What, what you feel comfortable with your hands and your eyes. Maybe you like to pick it up and roll it around in that way. Perhaps you like to keep it flat on the surface, whatever suits you. I know I like to keep it on the surface for part of the time because it helps me to compress it and make that all very nice and tight. So as I go along, I'm just going to add a little bit more glue and keep rolling and keep watching that edge as I go that I'm keeping that all very nice and flat. So now I'm rolled right up to the end. You can see that's all, I've kept that all nice and even. So now I'm switching back to my hot glue just to finish this little end off. So I'm going to just apply just a little bit and remember that as you squeeze and roll it will compress the glue. We don't want too much extending at that, at that final edge there. But we do want it to make a nice little seal. So again with hot glue we have to move quite quickly. Just watching that my last little turn there will be nice and even and I really like to compress that down right on that edge 
so we get a nice little seal. Just press that together there and hold that. And so you can see that our important ends are done with the hot glue. They're done very quickly and efficiently and it's not going to pop open on us. And that inside craft glue will dry in, it, in its own time. So you can see there that that is basically, that's your little tassel, which is super easy. Your little string is, is really firmly engaged there. But the next step that I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little tiny bit of rickrack for a trim. So my next step is to add my little trim and I'm going to follow my little guideline because I have my little stitching line. I know exactly where that can go. I do start my little trim just this side of where your join was, just because it's going to drop away there and our, our second little join on our braid, we don't want to be sitting right over this one because then we will have too much bulk. So the easiest way I find, is again, I'm going to use my hot glue this time. I'm just going to add a, a tiny little bit of hot glue to get started. Right on that line where my braid will go. And I simply just need to pop that one over. And I'll do the same thing. I'll work all the way around with my hot glue right the way around till we get to the other side. You can see that as I've come all the way around, I'm able to see then, I'm able to lie that down there and I'm able to see exactly where I need to cut that little piece so that it will line up beautifully. And then I'm just going to Finish that one off. And just tuck it in there. And then we've got our settled little tassel with its little contrasting braid trim. And you can imagine so many different braids out there. You could even get one that was quite wide and flat and highly embroidered, look wonderful. They're very made in the felt. They're a very folksy sort of uh, little product. But as you can see, really, really simple. So there we have it. Very quick and simple and easy. You can see all the lovely colors that you can make up. And these are really so useful and you're certainly, you're going to find them useful in some of my upcoming projects. You'll be able to add them to those and coordinate them with those. So make sure that you subscribe because you don't want to want to miss out on any of those. Also, I'm going to be showing you in, in uh, another video how to make them up in a craft foam. It's a different technique to make them up in the craft foam, but you can see that they're very, very pretty, very useful for, certainly for decorations, gift baskets, gift bags, that sort of thing. These can be used as, as you know, bag, bag tags, uh, zipper pulls, even incorporate them into some fabric jewelry. So they're awesome. I'm also going to be showing you how to make a version in fabric, which means you can use up all your little fabric pieces in your fabric stash. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's been useful. If you have, you could give me a thumbs up. That would be absolutely beaut. Remember to pay all of the good things forward but for now, it's Huru from me.